Welcome to English Madhuvanta. Today I would like to discuss and brief the first chapter of Vendor of Sweets. I hope you would get something from this presentation and I would like to make only a short introduction and a briefing regarding the first chapter of the novel by R.K. Narayan's Vendor of Sweets. Now let's see the beginning of the chapter 1. Conquer taste and you will have conquered the self. Sip Jagan to his listener who asked, Why conquer the self? Jagan said, I do not know, but all our sages advise us so. You can find the novel begins with Jagan's philosophy on food. Conquering means control yourself. If you control yourself and your desires, you can control yourself. So that is the idea, especially the taste means the desires. The next important point of chapter 1 is Jagan's character and his routine of life is introduced. He makes offerings to the goddess of Lakshmi and the environment becomes fresh with the fragrance of incense and sweetmeats. You can find in chapter 1, it shows that Jagan is very religious minded and he starts his daily routine by making offerings to Goddess of Lakshmi. You know, Goddess of Lakshmi is regarding the luxury or fortune or money and wealth. So as a businessman, Jagan, it is natural to worship the goddess of Lakshmi. So here the writer shows, gives out visual and olfactory images. You know, visual images means you can see in your mind's eye how Jagan is making offerings to goddess of Lakshmi. And olfactory image also is a very visible feature in this chapter. We can get the smell of the incense sticks and also we can feel the fragrance of sweets. So it's a very important uh, literary technique used by the writer. And Jagan and his uh, religious activities perform in the morning with the smell of jasmine and its incense sticks is an access to the chapter one. The scent of sweet frying in ghee is presented. You know, ghee is a kind of, uh, uh, you know, oil mixed with uh, milk. Then we can find Cursing's character is introduced. You know, Cursing is the one and only acquaintance or the companion of Jagat. Cousin is a man about town. So he's a well known person and he visits the sweet shop at 4 30 as usual to taste sweets. So, in that sense, we can say Cousin is a quality controller or he's a person who takes messages from one to another and he knows everybody in the town. So, this is a very common character used by the writer. Actually, he's an onlooker of everything. So, he's a well-known person in the town and at times, his uh, cursing hood is incompatible. Everybody calls him cursing. Sometimes, even the younger ones also may call him cursing. He could overwhelm the septic with genealogy if anybody challenges. If someone asks, how do you say that I am your uh, relation? Then he would say this and that. So that is his nature. And he always uh, tastes the sweets prepared in Jagan's house and he says the sugar situation may need watching. So that is his saying. The sugar situation 
may need watching. So he does it as a quality controller. He acts himself as the quality controller. In the evening, he comes to the shop and he does that service. He just nods by looking at Chagan and he directly goes into the kitchen and he tastes the delicious food uh, prepared by the cooks. And also he uh, acts as a helper or a companion. He says to Jagan, I have the supplier, I gave the supplier a bit of my mind yesterday when I passed go down street. You can find the writer uses these names of uh, streets and cities very often in his imaginary uh, city of Malgudi. So this concrete information is very useful for you to remember to write comments. Jagan asked him if he tasted the sweet that the cook experimented. Then he says, yes, of course. But Jagan actually does not uh, want this person to uh, eat much of his sweet because he's a businessman and suppose this person eats almost all the sweets and then it will be a disadvantage. So he says, all sweet meats, after all, are the same. So you can find, although Jagan uh, starts his day by making offerings and all that, actually uh, he is a little bit of stingy person. So that's why he says, all sweet meats, after all, are the same. But you can find, Jagan's uh, uh, statement and the response given by cursing to Jagan. Kazi says in response, I still see a lot of difference between one sweet and another. I hope I shall not become a yogi. You know, yogi is a person who has uh, given up all the desires and tastes. So he says that I'm not going to be a yogi or a sage like you. The story reveals the hypocrisy of character of Jagan. Actually, Jagan uh, acts as a very religious Hindu or religious uh, minded person, but in practice, he's not that uh, religious, he's a little bit of stingy. Jagan's theory of naturalism also is presented in the chapter one. He's a naturalist. Jagan tries to show himself as a naturalist. He always says one must eat only natural soil. But actually this is uh, ridiculous. This is humiliated by Kasim. You can find although Kasim acts as his friend and well-wisher, you can find Kasim sometimes uh, develops some negative attitudes also towards Chaga. But in contrast, Kasim creates humor by asking the soil that dries up on one's back when one has run a mile in the sun. So actually he condemns Jagan's theories. He just uh, mimics at Jagan. He condemns Jagan. Uh, what you mean by natural salt is uh, the soil that uh, dries up on one's back when one runs a mile in the sun. So that is a very good question asked by Kasin and it shows that Jagan becomes very, very negative and he develops a wry face towards him and uh, Jagan gets humiliated by this response. The friendship between Jagan and Kazin is based on humor. The writer uses uh, their chatting and their relationship also to develop humor. So Jagan shows a wry face. Wry face means a very uh, bad look to Kazin's comment. And he asks, uh, and he looks like a disembodied soul floating about the rim of the earth. You can find 
how uh, Jagan uh, looks like when he hears this comment or the response given by Kasi. You know, disembodied soul means uh, almost a dead person, the dead uh, soul of a person. So he's not lively. So Jagan's response looked like that. The language is very descriptive used by the writer. Uh, and he elaborates how uh, Jagan's response is. The next point is Jagan's appearance and his uh, manners are well presented in chapter one. He's a man of 55 and appearance was elfish. You know, elfish is uh, an imaginary uh, person not a good looking person, more like a dwarf, and his uh, skin was translucent. And uh, his uh, inner nerves can be seen uh, by the out, uh, by the onlookers, and uh, his bald headed person, and beyond the fringe, his hair fell in a couple of speckled waves on his nape. Nape means the back side of your neck and speckles means uh, some spots. So he's losing his hair. So that is a visual feature of Jagan's uh, appearance. And his family were less tolerant for this uh, process of tanning. I have discontinued sugar as you know. I find 20 drops of honey in hot water quite adequate. So this is also a very uh, important uh, utterance made by Jagan in chapter one. So it's actually contradictory. It is against his uh, profession. He thinks that uh, it is a great thing to stop using these uh, food items like salt, sugar and flour also. And is in the opinion that 20 drops of honey in hot water uh, will be quite adequate or enough for a person. So this is against uh, his profession and actually there you can find Cousin uh, wants to ask a question then what the hell you are uh, why the hell you are selling sweets to others as you don't uh, consume even sugar so this question is uh, in his mind but he does not ask directly because you know Kasin is a friend of Jagan and even Kasin is very understanding and he doesn't want to make Jagan angry. Then you can find uh, counting out or at the end of the day he begins to count his uh, profit or money he earns by selling sweets. He does it as a monarch on a throne serving his people. He runs his business with a lot of uh, dignity and he maintains a feature of a monarch. You know, monarch is a dictator or a king. So, uh, his seat is placed so that he could see everywhere around the sweet shop. He's a good manager and also he's a very successful businessman. The writer uses a metaphor to talk about the chair. He uses the word the throne. You know, throne is used by the king. So, Jagan himself is almost king in his sweet shop. The throne was a flat bottomed wooden chair. That also is a very traditional chair made uh, by his ancestors. And it's nearly century old. And uh, his ancestral house was behind Lowell statue. You know, Lowell statue also is a concrete information presented in chapter one. And also you can find in chapter one, 
it is discussed about the district collector or the tax collectors the englishman and he comes to meet jagan very often in the evening to get lessons on astrology so you can find jagan is also an astrologer he has the knowledge of uh, astrology the next point in my briefing i would like to focus your attention on uh, the routine life of jagan at the sweet shop uh, also is a very important uh, presentation done by the writer and he always uh, used to read bhagavad gita you know bhagavad gita is a hindu religious scripture and he just focuses his uh, eyes on this uh, bhagavad gita and it is presented in chapter 1 and also the character of captain the watcher uh, also is uh, presented and through uh, these uh, presentations you can find jagan's uh, complexity of character the complex character of jagan is uh, revealed to the readers he tells captain that beggar should not be seen here except Fridays. This is not the charity home. So you can find, although he begins his day with offerings to Goddess Lakshmi, he does not give a single coin to a beggar. So you can find the difference or the hypocrisy of Jagan's character. In the first chapter, the counting money. and how he uh, does it himself and how the others leave the place even cousin leaves the place when counting hour is approaching all those information is given in chapter 1 then the front stall boy drops paisa he received into a long neck bronze jug by 6 o'clock you know this paisa is a kind of uh, money or currency used especially in pakistan india and nepal uh, and it is equal to 100 rupees then you can find jagan has two collections two uh, money collections per day He brought another installment in a small container at seven. First, he counts the money earned till six o'clock. Then he writes it in his personal notebook, very uh, with very small letters, and he keeps another container to collect money from six to seven. Then he takes that money and he enters the earning from six to seven only. Uh, in his ledger the front stall boy drops paisa he received into a long neck drums jug by 6 o'clock then he brought another installment in a smaller container at 7 so this is to mislead mainly the tax officers he doesn't want to uh, pay taxes to the government and he writes only the earning of the day from 6 to 7 in his ledgers so the tax officer sam is led by chaga he's not that humble and although he looks as a very religious person then also his routine question asked by the staff is presented by the writer how much is left all you can find he's struggling with this left all what to do with the leftovers so he doesn't want to see any uh, sweet leftovers in the evening he wants everything to be sold out very neatly and he puts the blame on the staff then the uh, cook says we will try a new sweet tomorrow so actually that word uh, is taken by the staff by jaga Jagan wants to get that answer from the staff. He doesn't like to tell the staff to mix the leftovers and prepare another type of sweet meat. But he gets that answer from the 
staff. He wants to get it from the staff and the head cook says we will try a new sweet tomorrow. Then what is his answer? He says after all everything consists of flour, sugar and uh, flavors. So this is his uh, generalization. He just generalizes it's okay. Yes, you can make a new sweet tomorrow by mixing the leftovers. You can find uh, how Jagan is stingy and how he is uh, behaving in his real life, although he himself uh, cheating by making a lot of offerings to Goddess Lakshmi and by focusing on uh, Bhagavad Gita. Then he makes an entry in a small notebook to mislead the tax officers in chapter 1 you can find. Then the cash came in after 6 o'clock out of the smaller jar. He considers as free cash or independent category. He puts them, he writes them in the notebook and reference to any taxes. He can make any reference to any tax officers, uh, which is very small amount. Then he says, Captain, see if the lock is all right. So you can find how he is uh, attached to his uh, sweet shop or the business you can find. He asks his watcher or the captain to check if the lock is all right. Then uh, also he advises the captain, well, be watchful. Then you can find the captain's up with this sentence. The captain gave him a military salute. And that was the end of the day. Okay, now I would like to uh, focus your attention on some of the new words in chapter 1 of uh, this Narayan's uh, vendor of sweets. As I told you, conquer means uh, to control your desires or feelings, then stimulate that is to uh, encourage or motivate. Actually, cursing is stimulating Chagan to go on talking because uh, cousin wants some kind of uh, friendship to be maintained with Chagan. So that's why he just asks questions. Actually, he's not that interested in Chagan's uh, philosophy. Then you can find another word, number three, crevice. Crevice is a small hole or a crack. And Jagan puts his uh, incense sticks uh, within those crevices. Then imperceptibly means uh, very slightly or very subtle. Uh, it is mentioned in the chapter one how this uh, smell of sweets and incense sticks mix in imperceptibly that means very well uh, mix up uh, one to another then in incompatible incompatible also is something contradictory especially cousins uh, hood or the relationship between uh, jagan and cousin or anybody cousin is addressed by everybody as cousin so uh, that is mismatching sometimes even smaller ones also call him cursing so he can overwhelm the septic with genealogy it is mentioned in the text genealogy means uh, the pedigree or the line of family the next one comment that means to interpret or explain next word uh, in the earlier series of uh, this book you get instead of chat the word palaver palaver means to go on chatting then translucent that is mainly the skin appearing veins uh, which is visible to anybody so jagan is a middle-aged person and his uh, skin is translucent that means his uh, inner veins can be seen by others the next word is elfish elfish is a supernatural creature of folk tales as i mentioned you earlier and typically represented 
as a small, delicate, elusive figure in human form with pointed ears, magical powers, and a capricious nature. So you can find uh, this elfish look is uh, a word which is used by uh, the writer in chapter one. Okay, now I just uh, briefed through you, I just briefed the chapter one and I just uh, read some important segments in this chapter one of Narayan's The Vendor of Sweets. The book begins with conquer taste and you will have conquered the self. So that is the philosophy or the motto of uh, Jagan's uh, very often you can find in the book. Said Jagan to his listener who asked, why conquer the self? Jagan said, I do not know. But all our sages advise us so. You can find that Jagan actually does not stand on his principle. He doesn't know actually what he talks about. The listener lost interest in question. His aim was only to stimulate conversation. Why? He occupied a low wooden stool next to Jagan's chair. Jagan sat under the framed picture of the goddess Lakshmi hanging on the wall and offered prayers first thing in the day by reverently placing a string of jasmine on top of the frame. He also lit an incense stick and stuck it in a crevice in the wall. The hour was charged with the scent of jasmine and incense, which imperceptibly blended with the fragrance of sweetmeats frying in ghee in the kitchen across the hall. So that is the second chapter. You can find how the environment become very lively with the smell of uh, sweets and also the incense sticks that is offered by Chagan to Goddess Lakshmi. In chapter 1, paragraph 3, the listener was a cousin. You can find the character of cousin also is introduced in chapter 1. The listener was a cousin, though how he came to be called so could not be explained since he claimed cousinhood with many others in the town, totally incompatible at times. But if challenged, he could always overwhelm the septic with genealogy. You know, overwhelm means he can make the other surprise or the other will get surprised by his explanation regarding the genealogy. He knows the relationship and he can focus or point out any relationship to anyone if any septic questions. Septic means a person who suspect. He was a man about town and visited many places and houses from morning till night. So Kazim's character is a very common character and he has no any fixed job except uh, taking tales or carrying tales from one to another. So he is used as a humorous uh, figure in the chapter one, not only in chapter one, throughout the book. He remains very close to Jagan's character and he uh, acts as the ambassador or the mediator to Jagan's life. So. Uh, you can find he was a man about town and visited many places and houses from morning till night and invariably every day at about 4 30 he arrived through a brief glance and a nod at Chagan, passed straight into the kitchen and came out 10 minutes later wiping his mouth you can find this fellow comes to taste the sweet prepared by Chaga. With the end of his power on his shoulder, commenting, the sugar situation may need watching. I hear that the government are going to raise the price. We fly so right today. I gave the supplier a bit of my mind yesterday when I passed go down street. Don't ask me what put me there. I have friends and relations all over this city and everyone wants me to attend to this or that. 
I do not grudge serving others. What is life worth unless we serve and help each other? You can find this uh, service to others is highlighted by the writer here. Service to someone, to be a service to someone is a philosophy or a principle of Dharma. Serve to be uh, to be served to someone, to be a service to someone, is a principle of uh, Gandhi, and it is highly uh, highlighted throughout this novel. And even in uh, Sri Lanka, you know, uh, late Prime Minister Bandar Naik also had the same uh, opinion. The greatest uh, service or the duty of the man is to do a service to the nation. So that is the same thing. Quarters, even late Mr. Bandar Naika, the former Prime Minister of Sri Lanka, uh, said to the nation. Then Jagan asked, Did you try the new sweet the cook experimented with today? So this shows that Jagan is interested to know uh, the taste uh, or the mixture or the ingredient, uh, how the ingredients uh, uh, give the taste. So he just asks him, how is it? Then he says, yes, of course, it's tasty. Oh, but I think it's only an old recipe in a new shape. All sweet meats, after all, are the same. Don't you agree? So this is actually hypocrisy of Jagan. He doesn't want cousin to eat more and more. He just asks, all sweet meats after all are the same, don't you agree? Then you can find, cousin says, no sir, said the cousin. I still see a lot of difference between one sweet and another. I hope I shall not become a yogi and lose the taste for all. So he mentions that he's not going to lose his desire so uh, taste and he's not going to become uh, very very religious or very highly uh, religious uh, minded person that is what he mentions it was then that Jagan pronounced his philosophy conquer taste and you will have conquered the self so this is a sentence or utterance made by Jagan throughout the novel they they chatted or palavered thus for half an hour more. And then Jagan asked, Do you know what I eat nowadays? Anything new? asked the cousin. I have given up salt since this morning. Jagan said, with a glow of triumph. You can see, actually, Jagan wants to act himself as a very uh, religious or very a uh, higher person who has lost the interest or taste on these material things. Then uh, he says, one must eat only natural salt. So what is natural salt? You can see the response given by Kasi. Ask the Kasi and add it. The salt that dries up on one's back when one has run a mile in the sun Jagan made a wry face at the coarse reference. So this reference is very, very hard on Jagan. It's very negative. So he made a very uh, bad look. He was worried about this answer given by Kasi. He had the outlook of a disembodied soul floating above the grim of the earth. You can find the language used by the writer. At 55, his appearance was slight and elfish. So he is not looking very well. His brown skin was translucent. His brow receded gently into a walnut shade of baldness. You can see bald is appearing on his face, on his head. And beyond the fringe, his hair fell in a couple of speckled waves on his nape. So he is losing his hair. His chin was covered with whitening bristles. So this shows that he is getting old and his uh, 
Bristles means the maybe the hair on his beard is getting uh, grey. As he shaved only at certain intervals, feeling that to view oneself daily in a mirror was an intolerable European hat. He wore a loose chip bar of his dhoti, both made of material spun with his own hand. Every day he spun for an hour. Spinning means he is uh, making his own yarn out of a tool. Retain enough yarn for his sartorial requirement. Yarn means thread. He never possessed more than two sets of clothes at a time and delivered all the excess in neat bundles to the local handling committee in exchange for cash. Although the cash he thus earned was less than 5 rupees a month, he felt a sentimental thrill in receiving it. You can find he gets a lot of satisfaction by following Gandhi's principle and helping the nation to become independent or self-sufficient. As he had begun the habit when Gandhi visited the town over 20 years ago, you can find the reference to Gandhi and he had been commented for it. So Gandhi also commended his habit of uh, spinning yarn. He wore a narrow almond shaped pair of glasses set in a yellowish frame and peeped at the world over their pale rim. He draped his shoulders in a kadar shawl with gold yellow patterns on it and shod his feet with thick sandals made out of the leather of an animal which had died of old age. Being a follower of Gandhi, he explained, I do not like to think that a living creature should have its throat cut for the comfort of my feet. And this occasionally involved him in excursions to remote villages where a cow or calf was reported to be dying. When he secured the hide, he soaked it in some solution and then turned it over to an old cobbler he knew, who had his little repair shop under a street under a tree at the Albert Mission compound. So you can find how Jagan makes his own footwear also is given out in this chapter. And I think you can go on reading this first chapter by yourself and next it mentions uh, how his son Mali was uh, helping his planning process and later how he became very intolerable to this uh, planning activity because it is a very hard work and it's not a very easy task because it is giving out a very bad smell and also it mentions uh, that uh, next in next few paragraphs you can find uh, some of Jagan's uh, discontinuation of sugar and flour also is mentioned that is uh, Jagan is acting himself as a very higher or very uh, religious person and next you can find in next few uh, paragraphs uh, how Jagan blames others and how he stops the beggars coming into his sweet shop and then next uh, chapter you can find uh, how he counts the day's earning and all that and the chapter ends up with a salute by the captain okay now i just uh, briefed through uh, briefed you this chapter one and i think you can read by yourself and write short notes write chapter notes for your benefit or for your future references okay and i hope uh, you would uh, subscribe my channel and keep in touch even in future and goodbye